Lord, thank you for uh, gathering us here once again to hear you know your word. Um, pray for Charles as he delivers the message to us. And I pray that we uh, reflect on what he has to say and apply it to our lives. And but accordingly, uh, just uh, thank you now for giving us a place to gather and pray for all those who have gathered here. And pray that we have uh, received a special blessing. Think for a moment about this question. I asked this question on one of the uh, pages on Facebook that I am a member of. The question is, what one thing would I do to grow more as a Christian? I had about 40 or 50 response. What one thing should I do to grow more as a Christian? If someone asked you that question, what would be your response? Would you suggest some basic spiritual discipline, such as reading the Bible, Praying, finding accountability partner, repenting of sin, perhaps learning theology. In John 6, 30, 28 and 29, the crowds brought this exact question to Jesus. And his answer was this. Then they asked him, John 6, 28 and 29, What must we do to do the works God requires? What must we do to do the works God requires? And I'm sure often we perhaps ask that question, just what are we to do to do the work of God? And Jesus answered this in John 6, 28 and 29, the work of God is this. Here is the work of God is this. Be on time. I mean, uh, <laughs> That's the, a yeah, rare, there is it. What you preach. I know, that, a rare. It's a rare occasion that y'all are not an hour earlier. <laughs> here's what here's what Jesus said. The work of God is this. In most churches, you sing thirty or forty minutes, and our kids would wait and be late thirty minutes because they didn't want to sit through the singing. Here's what, John, here's what Jesus said in John 6, 38 and 39. The work of God is this. The work of God is this. Here is what God wants you to do. You ready for this? Here it is. Here's what God wants you to do. <clears throat> to believe in the one he has sent. Here's what Jesus said to the crowd, and the crowd said, How or what what is what must we do to do the work God requires? The question is, how what are we to do to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish in our lives? That's the question all of us should ask. How can and what is it that God wants me to How can I accomplish? What is it that how can I do the work that God calls me to do? Notice they are asking Jesus what they must do to live a life that pleases God. That is what a Christian should do that is pleasing God. So what can we do to please God? Jesus answers that the work of God is to believe. 
The work of God is to believe. In other words, the Christian life is not about doing. The Christian life is not about doing. The Christian life is about believing. Isn't that great? Amen. It's not about doing. It's about believing. Getting this right is a crucial to sanctification. Most of us are naturally doers. I mean, we gladly embrace the next project, the next challenge, the next assignment. So our pursuit of Christian maturity produces a lot of busy efforts, but little lasting change. Why? Because we are doing too much and believing too little. All the doing in the world, if it's not believing God, then it will not be of any effect to you. Doing is not what God requires first of you. It is believing. And I would say the biggest problems that Christian has is believing. I just don't believe that. I hear what you're saying, preacher. I even read it, but I really don't believe it. Believing is obeying. If you obey, then you believe. If you, you can't say, well, I believe and don't do it. What is more constant with faith than to recognize that we are naked of all virtue in order to be clothed by God? Faith is believing God will provide that we are emptied of all good so that we can be filled by Him that we are slaves to sin to be freed by Him blind to be illuminated by Him lame to be made straight by Him. So we are slaves to sin, we are blind, we're lame, we're weak to be sustained by Him, to take away from us all occasion for glory, take away all the occasion for us to be glorified, that He alone may stand forth glorious and we glory in Him. By the way, it's Calvinism. I just, I just, I just spoke you what John Calvin said. I'm glad to be a Calvinist if John said that. Let me give you a couple of passages of scripture tonight that speak particularly to a life of faith. Romans 14:23. Romans 14:23 says this. But whosoever has doubts is condemned if he eats because the eating is not from faith for whosoever does not for whatsoever does not proceed from faith is sin. God requires believing and another word for believing is faith. Hebrews 11.6 We all know this verse, I'm sure. And without faith, without believing, it is impossible to believe God. Where Hebrews 11.6 Believing God by faith 1 Timothy 1.5 1 Timothy 1.5 Look at it. Let 
The goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Here's the instructions that Paul gave Timothy. Let it come. Let love come from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. You can't fake God out. God knows your heart. God knows your spirit. Colossians 1.3. Colossians 1.3. Notice what it says. We give thanks to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and for your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you have heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Remember, we've been talking about this morning that the believer is sustained by the gospel. How are we sustained? How, how can we? How are we being sustained in our faith? And it is knowing the gospel. Notice First Thessalonians one two. First Thessalonians one two. First Thessalonians one two. We'll read through verse six. We give thanks to God always for for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind, constantly in bearing in bearing in your mind your work of in, in, in bearing in mind your work of faith. Number two, your labor of love. And thirdly, your steadfastness of hope. Your work of, faith. your work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of of our God the Father. What is the third one? Your work of faith, your labor of love. Steadfastness of hope. Three things that God looks at in our lives. It's not what we do. You can never do anything. None of your works accomplishes any more than if you don't do them. You are not your work of your your works without these three things will probably produce very little change in your life. God is looking for change in our heart and our lives. He goes on to say, For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has, cho has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with all full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sakes, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the words with much, with much affliction, with the joy of the Holy Spirit.